everyone. This week in class, we've been talking a lot about hypothesis testing. We've done a lot of different types of tests. We've looked at the Z test, the T test, the chi-squared test, um, and even more. And the common, a common theme with all of these tests is that we're looking at competing hypotheses, the null, the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. And we do the test to decide which one we're gonna go with. And in the end, we make some decision. Um, the problem is, hypothesis tests are not 100% accurate. So we could potentially make some errors. There's two types of errors that we can make. The first one is rejecting the null hypothesis when it's actually true. That's the first type of error. The second one would be not rejecting the null when it's actually not true. And these errors have names. They're called type 1 and type 2 errors. So we're going to talk a little bit more in detail about both of these. Yes, and the null hypothesis is always the hypothesis of no effect. That means the treatment did not work. Um, if you're testing for a disease, you do not have the disease. Uh, if you're testing um, whether somebody's innocent or guilty, yeah, it's always the dull hypothesis. Most people are innocent. It's the dull, not guilty hypothesis. So it's no effect. And the alternative is always that there is an effect there. The treatment did work. The uh, defendant is guilty. Uh, the person has the disease. So let's look at this. Let's look at the, um, uh, in the simple table here. There's a truth here. And you either there is an effect or there isn't. So this right here, no effect, would be the truth under the null hypothesis. When we assume the null hypothesis, this is negative, nothing there. So this is null. Null, negative, nothing going on. And when we assume the alternative hypothesis, the other alternative, this is the alternative that there is an effect. So this is the alternative hypothesis. Positive, there is an effect. Then we decide, basically by our null cutoff, by our decision maker, when we set that significance level, we are setting the probability of making a type 1 error. We'll see this in a minute. But first, we make this decision. We either go, say there is an effect, or there's not. So if there is an effect, that basically means we're deciding for the alternative. We're rejecting the null. If we say there's no effect, that means we're not rejecting the null. But so many double negatives, let's not get tangled up with that. Let's just think about this logically. So there are just two situations. You're either here or here. So when you're here and you have we can talk about a specific example would be like a, a pregnancy test, right? You're either, the truth is, you're either pregnant or you're not. And then the test you take is either going to give you a positive, you are pregnant, or a negative, you're not. So if, if you're actually pregnant, the right decision would be to get a positive result. That would be here. This would be the correct so this decision. this would be the correct decision right here. And right here, if you're pregnant, you don't want to get a false negative here. That is an error. And what kind of error is that? That is, think about it. This is when you really have, we'll start with it. Let's just see what the correct decision would be here first. If you're not pregnant, the correct decision is to say you're not. So this is correct. And the type we've been looking at in class is we've been looking only at the hypothesis, the null hypothesis. We've been looking under the null. We say, OK, at some point we'll reject that. And when we reject the null, we say there's an effect. And so that would be like saying the person's pregnant when they're not. And that's the type 1 error. False positive. It's a false positive. And now, when there really is an effect, when there really is an effect, and we fail to detect it, we don't reject that null. We don't pick up the effect, that is a type 2 error, and it's called a false negative, negative. because you should, you're, you're positive, and we're deciding the wrong way. So that's a false negative. So we looked at this a little bit with um, mammograms, and uh, you know, we did conditional probability. We, we looked at false positives and false negative rates. So, um, 
if we want to put this back in the context of hypothesis testing, we can draw a curve right here. That's the normal curve. And for example, we could do, um, and we could say, when the null is true, this is when nothing's going on. We're in this column here. When null is true, this is the distribution of some test statistic measuring evidence for the null. So if this was a pregnancy test, it would be measuring the um, level of uh, H, some hormone in your urine. I think it's called H, HCG, HCG. So this is people have varying degrees of this. And so at some point, this is when you're not pregnant, when the null is true, at some point we make a, a decision. And our typical decision has been at what? 5%. 5%. So this area is 5%, and that's our significance level, alpha. So what is this? So this is the null cutoff. And if we set it at 5%, this right here, that's 5%. That is, everybody, the null is true. No one here is pregnant. So what percent, what's our type 1 error? That would be 5%. So when we set alpha equal to 5%, that's what we're doing. We're setting the probability of making a false positive, a false alarm. Okay? Like if this was a smoke detector, this would be all those times, this 5% would be when your alarm goes off, say in fire, when you're just cooking. Okay, so here, so this is the distribution of level of HCG, measuring evidence for pregnancy or not, uh, or a test statistic based on that, measuring a quantitative measure that is evidence of being, what, not pregnant or pregnant. So the more you have of that, the more, but there's an overlap. This is what we mean. There's uncertainty. So this is when you're not pregnant. Mm -hmm. Null is not. And this is when you are pregnant. And you can see that it's, it's not 100%. So when you are pregnant, you have much higher levels of this. Now you set one decision maker. This significance level you set for the type 1 error is the decision maker for both of them. So here, when we set this, we call the probability of a type 1 error alpha. That's right here, we set it at 5%. But now, what does that mean? When you really are pregnant, if you go this direction, from here, this direction, you're deciding the right way when you're pregnant. You're deciding for the alternative. So this is this is deciding for the alternative, which is pregnant. On this side of the cutoff, you're saying you're not pregnant. So not. Null means not. And this is pregnant. Okay. So how are we gonna so what's the probability of a type 2 error here? This is type 1 alpha, but we call beta the probability of a type 2 error. So how are we going to look at that? So that's going to be from here, from our cutoff, over this way. So this right here is beta, right? The probability of a type 2 error. So all of this. Okay, so when we set this decision maker right here, if you have a smaller than 5% p-value, we reject this null of no pregnancy and go with the alternative of pregnancy. And this 5% is, remember, this is a distribution when the null is true. So these people aren't pregnant, but we are deciding they are. So that is the type 1 error. And we set that. That's what we're willing to go with. We can Now, why is this the type 2 error? Because the same decision maker is going to divide this probability distribution, which all these people here are pregnant. All of them. Some of them might not have high levels of this HCG, maybe because they got tested too early. You see, this is not 
this test is not 100% accurate. Mm -hmm. Some people here have very high levels because they have another condition that uh, makes your hormones level high, like some kind of um, urinary tract infection or kidney disease or something. This will make it high, and so they have something else, another condition, that's making them. So that's why it's not a perfect test. And here, it's for this, there's always more false negatives in this pregnancy test because if you're really anxious and you test yourself right away, like it's happened, uh, <laughs> it's going to come up negative. You have to be patient. You have to wait a week so you can get a whole lot of false negatives here. And that doesn't mean you're not pregnant. That means you are pregnant, you just haven't. So this is the probability of a type 2 error. So which is worse, Carly? Um, that's a good question. Terrible. Oh, <laughs> so let's, let's do a different example. How about if this was, um, how about if it was a smoke alarm to detect fire? So this is no fire. The no, the boring one, no fire. No fire. And this detects the level of smoke in the air. And then the type, this error is when there is a fire, but you're a lot, there, is, there isn't a fire. This is a false alarm. This is, yeah, this is a false alarm. So a type 1 error is a false alarm. That's a great way to think of it. Yes. It's a false alarm. This happens to all of us. There's no fire, you're just cooking. And right. it goes off. That's your type 1 error. But here, a fire, there is, that's a fact. So this would be, what would this mean? This would be your alarm not going off when there's an actual fire. That would be worse. Way worse scenario, for sure. So what can we do in that case? We could move this decision maker, slide it over. We can't change the detection system unless we have some engineer. Got something coming. else, yeah. Right? We can't change this distribution unless we get some new equipment. All we can do is move this decision maker. So if there was a fire, we don't want anybody. I'd move this way over yeah, here. Yeah, as far over here as we could. That would mean what? How would it look then? So what we just did was actually move this significance level, move our cutoff value way over here. So now we can see if we're looking at the probability of a type 1 error, it's a lot bigger. It's all of this. And we decreased our probability of a type 2 error. It's tiny. And with a fire alarm, that makes sense. We don't want there to be an actual fire and the alarm to not go off. So what we're saying is that this uh, criterion, this, this alpha, depends on the situation. And it depends on weighing the costs of type 1 versus type 2 errors. And they vary depending on the situation. Yes. So, um, so this right here is the probability of the type 2 error. This false negative here. And, but now what, what we want to talk about is when we make a correct decision, this is the called the power of the test to detect an effect that's really there. So it'll be the power of the t test. This, what am I talking about? Everything, we're focusing on this curve right here. We're focusing right here. When, when the, the alternative, alternative is, true. is true. And this is called the power of a test. The power of the test to detect an effect that's really there when it's really there. And this is the type 2 error. And of course, together, they have to add up to 100%. Because there's only two types of decisions. These will also add up to 100%. So now, let's look at this. OK, so we have a very small probability of a type 2 error, which means we have a very large power. This are all the times that, look, how, look at this tremendous power when the alternative is true, when there really is a fire, this whole part of the curve, the same decision maker here, we're making the right decision here and detecting an effect that's really there. And so you have a high power to test. This is called the power. And we so said if this was like 1%, what would be the power? It would, and yeah, exactly, it would just be. 100 minus 1, right? So the power is actually calculated. We said the probability of a type 2 error is 
beta. So the power, the way we would calculate it, is just 1 minus beta, or 100% minus the probability of a type 2 error. That looks good.